deep in the forests of Granite Falls, and on the tippy top of the waterfall, lies a minuscule town full of powerful beings, beings known as the Spellcasters. They come from a realm far in the distance that once was a thriving metropolis called Magica. However, the planet was not able to sustain the misuse of its energy centuries ago and tragically tore itself apart. This violent occurrence is now known as the Sundering. While the event tragic, it was the catalyst to the magical houses coming together for the first time ever to salvage what little they had. They nominated three special individuals to maintain the shattered relic that was their home and safeguard its secrets. These highly regarded beings are known as the Sages. The three houses remain intact. House of the Untamed, House of Practical Magic, and House of Mischief. They are the realm's mystics and keepers. The elite families that survived and continue to fund the restoration cause are known as the Elders. The rest of the population that survived the horror were sent to live in a different planet with a direct line to the realm, where said population could visit at any time if need ever arose. They were not allowed to stay. The energy and resources on the planet continued to be weak and therefore can't withstand so many dwellers. So after a visit, the guests are required to leave for a spell until the sages can re-energize and thus maintain the vortex strong. Their new town, Glimmerbrook, is tucked away, hidden from the normals. Normals are what the spellcasters call the humans. It was meant to be a place where the casters' families could repopulate the houses, make themselves strong again. It's easier said than done. You see, once on the new planet, the newer generation become more interested in being normal than being spellcasters. And because of the disconnect with the realm, some children were simply born without magic. These beings were known as the Eviscerated, and they were typically cast out of Glimmerbrook and the realm altogether, unless they sacrificed greatly for the opportunity to be filled with a power that only the realm could give. Filling an Eviscerated or normal with power was energy from the realm transferred into a soul and removed from the realm itself. It was not given lightly, thus payment was high, and came when you least expected it. And typically the eviscerated regretted their choices when the collectors came around, so, so not many made the active choice to be filled. A few decades after the sundering occurred, the elders became anxious with the dwindling numbers of the spellcasters, and persuaded the sages to create a new mandate on the spellcasting community. Once a child became a young adult, they would be tested for levels of magical energy. If even one ounce of magic was found coursing through their veins, the beings would be forced to become apprentices of the elders. Each magical being would be placed in the home of a random elder and their studies would commence until they became master spellcasters themselves. And until that day, they were bound to their masters. This decree was creatively named the blood trial. And so our story begins with a particular set of twins called Alexandra and Xander Shadowman's blood trial and their placement in society. Will they be placed with the elders from the house of the practical, the mischief, or untamed? Or will their trials prove something else entirely? I could hardly believe it. Xander and my blood trial results came in, and turns out I'm an eviscerated, me, Alexandra Shadowman, top of my class, most enthusiastic mystic and lover of all things spellcaster, yet my brother, who only wants to chase tail and play his guitar, is full of magic. Oh no, this means I'll be outcasted, sent to live with the wolves. One of my moms doesn't seem to think it will be all that bad, but this is what I've been dreaming of since I knew dreams existed. My family deals with stress a bit differently. They started joking about my livelihood. We'll keep you in the closet. We'll build you a basement. Keep you there so the elders and the sages won't find you. Ha ha ha! Very funny. 
Mom One kept reassuring me that all will work out. That is what shadow men's do, work things out, cause we are clever and a bit mischievous. Moms were staff at the carnival and they were packing up for another quarter away. I would have to look at community colleges in Brindleson Bay or Willow Creek while my brother got placed at the Valkyrs, the most elite elders in Glimmerbrook. I was so jealous. Then I got the most monumental idea. Xander wants to go to a school for music. All I want to do is learn magic. Why not switch places? The Valkyrs don't know any of us, really, and they wouldn't be in for a shock when I show up at the door looking like a boy, like my brother Xander. I can make my voice deep and my walk doodlier. He was worried about me asking a sage to get filled. Many spellcasters frowned upon the idea. They didn't like the already unstable realm getting weaker, but I would pay the cost in full and one day, one day be able to give back to the realm. One of the sages was from the House of Mischief, and I had a sneaking suspicion she would love the thought of me deceiving the Valkyrs and the realm as a whole. I would wait until dark, when there were barely any beings awake, and put my plan in motion. By the time I got to the realm, it was dark. The entire place was twinkling. I could feel the energy all around me. Alfaba the sage was just like I imagined her to be, pink and glittery. Everything about her was copacetic. I told her right away I was eviscerated and she felt bad for me. When I told her I wanted to be filled, she gave me a playful smile. I told her mine and Xander's plans. She hesitated for a millisecond and quickly agreed. I have a good feeling about you. But the cost is great. If you agree, I agree, I agree, I exclaimed. And just like that, I was filled with Magicka's ancestral sight. Moats, she squeaked. Bring me seven, and filled you will be. Seven, that was not a problem, I yelled over my shoulder as I scurried up the stairwell to the landing. My eyes have never been so clear. At night, all of Magicka's energy was visible to me. The pulsating orbs of blue and pink light called my name, whispering and cheering, Alexandra, Alexandra. They didn't seem mad I was taking them for myself. They almost welcomed it. 
Upon my return, I placed the delicate motes in her hand. All seven of them tickled my palm a bit, and instantaneously, Lafaba completed my quest by filling me as she'd promised. It wasn't painful, but a bit uncomfortable, like my body was being taken over by a foreign entity. It was electric and so shocking. It lifted my weight and suspended me in the air for a bit. I was very glad that it was only momentary. I don't know that it could have withstood more time being filled. And then, the spell book. My very own personal spell book from the House of Mischief. Oh, I could squee! But I wasn't allowed to yell in the sanctuary. My roadmap was laid before me. Nine practical magic spells, seven mischief spells, eight untamed spells, and 15 alchemy potions to learn. El Faba warned me again about the filling. They would come calling for me when payment was due, and if the Valkyrs ever found out I was lying about being my brother, she wouldn't protect me. She promised my secret was safe with her, but she wasn't my fairy godmother. I complied. She filled my young brain with talk of familiars. She said, get one. They balance and protect you, for a spellcaster without a familiar is like a man without shelter. She told me to build up endurance, to duel other witches and warlocks. I would one day be able to unlock spells and other perks that way. How exciting! Then she sent me on my second mission, the witches' quarters, to buy my first familiar, broom and wand. I couldn't wait! I didn't have many simoleons to my name. I mean, my mother's were carnival staff, for goodness sakes. So I bought the gnarled broom carved from the ancient tree of the magic realm. It seemed to call to me like the moats did, and the wand I purchased was of oak, simple and elegant, like I hoped I would become in the future. the shears in one hand and my new outfits in another. All the packing was done and the moms were gone. My brother was also ready to hitch a bus ride to San Myshuno in the morning so he was fast asleep. I had to pay respects to my luscious red locks. Of all my physical attributes, my hair was my favorite. I mean, I had zero boobs in the chest department. That will actually help with upcoming cause, I hoped. And I had annoying sprinkling of freckles, but my hair was my crowning jewel. Something I was totally willing to sacrifice for this new adventure. Because tomorrow, I would be the boy who chose magic at the Valkyrs. And I couldn't wait.